Hi, people. Look at this view we have right here. And we're joining now. But hey, Andrew. Hi. How's it going? Nice to join us today. Look at this view. <laughs> it's a beautiful view. Well, thank you, sir. That was your idea. Uh, yeah, I just I got tired of looking at walls. Well, yeah. hold on. We only have 30 seconds. 30 seconds. We only <laughs> 30, have 30 seconds? 30 minutes to do this. Let me start. We're going we're gonna to do this auto one pop meals. But let's start because it's going to take a little time and we can chit chat while we do this. Absolutely. Okay. Northern Italy risotto. Rice, very simple ingredients. Rice, saffron, parmigiano reggiano, the good stuff. Butter. Now, since I'm from Northern Italy. Lots of butter. No, <laughs> just a little bit. I'm from Northern Italy. So you put two so, tablespoons in there? Yes, two, oh. ta two tablespoons of butter. Uh, but, butter. 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 But, Northern Italy, a little bit of oil in there. Usually is sunflower seed oil or olive oil. Okay. So in northern, in northern Italy, they, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm going fast here. In northern, northern Italy, they don't have uh, onions? Is that yes, they, they have onions, <laughs> but I forgot to tell people that I'm getting onions in the pot. Ah. About a cup of medium diced onion. You can go find, and I like to use Vidalia onions because they're sweeter. And uh, Spanish Vidalia. 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 I, 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 I don't know how to do it. <laughs> you got to elongate the A. I can't. You know what? I, I, can't, I can't. So see, now we can chit chat. Okay, cool. Because the onions have started. <laughs> the onions have already been started. And the whole point here, it's kind of to soften the onion. We don't want to saute it. We mm -hmm. don't want to give it a brown color because the risotto has to stay pretty much, I don't want to call it coral-less. Oh, wait, I want it right here. Yeah, don't look at that. Look at that. Look at that one right there. Okay. Sorry. Our producer, Amanda, is out sick today. We hope you get better, Amanda. Okay. And now, check out this new set. We were hoping there would be people back there holding signs like, we love your show. <laughs> but everybody is doing what they're supposed to do. They're in class. Yeah. Well, they should be. Uh, I think class comes out at 10. So they should be walking What's by and making stupid faces. Uh, so. I'll do, I'll be awesome. That'd be great. <laughs> so uh, the whole trick here. And it's very simple ingredients. So mm -hmm. now, you were asking me about the rice. Yes, absolutely. It's a good Before the show, you picked up the rice. And tell me what you just thought about well, the rice. Well, I was asking because uh, looking at the setup for today, I was like, okay, so can you make risotto out of any kind of rice? No, what question did you ask me before that one? Uh, oh, why did you get a box of risotto? <laughs> that, and I'm like, that, question that, that was a question. <laughs> and I'm like, well, because we need to make risotto. And it's like, oh, so the rice is called risotto? It's like, mm, no. no. So what did I tell you? It is, uh, the rice is actually a super fino arborio. 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 You know how many kind of rice are there around the world? A billion. Not a billion, but there is about, uh, there is about 800 kinds of rice. 800? 800. Okay. So this arborio rice comes from the arborio area in northern Italy. Okay. Uh, actually. It says uh, product of Italy right there. Yeah, be careful with those labels. Yeah, true. Just like when you buy olive oil, it says packed in Italy. And the olive oil comes from Tunisia or mm -hmm. uh, Turkey. I mean, nothing wrong with that. But they're using marketing the whole product as Italian. Right. But this uh, arborio is a kind of rice. And uh, northern Italy, the city of Novara. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. They, they, that's where my great-grandmother was from. They really know how to work with rice to the point that <laughs> in, the, in their town, they don't like pasta. Spaghetti, macaroni. Just right. They're like, oh, uh, uh, my, my great grandfather used to say, pasta, spaghetti, I eat that, and with one, uh, I go pee once, and it's all gone. Right. And it's like, no, I want rice, and he wanted just rice. So, this is very simple to find in the supermarkets, uh, and we're going on with the series, uh, we're continuing with the series on one pot. Mm -hmm. uh, home can be done, guess where else it can be done? In your dorm. In your dorm. In your little apartment. Little apartment, you want studio, you just need one burner, one pot. So it comes really cool package like this. Ah, freeze dry. Or uh, uh, vacuum packed. Vacuum packed because rice will absorb moisture. Right. And you don't want that to happen. 
Now, another ingredient of, um, of the risotto is parmigiano reggiano, mm -hmm. which is, I know it's delicious. It's like $25 a pound. Oh, Chef Carlo, that's a lot of money. You know what? That not problem is substituted for either grana padano or substituted for pecorino, which is sheep's cheese, and it costs way less. Ah. It won't be your original uh, parmigiano uh, reggiano or your original risotto milanese, but it will do it. But and and so the sheep cheese also has the same nutty flavor. Yeah, close, uh, close. Here, open this box for All me. Right. Don't cut yourself. There's a paring knife right there. So the point here is we're gonna we're gonna uh, cook the onions. We're gonna soften them. We're not going to brown them or give them any color. Okay. Now, a very important ingredient in this dish, original, is saffron. Mm. And I'm going to use this one here because we can, because we have the budget. Mm -hmm. But for really, for dorm purposes, you don't have to use saffron. It's one of the most expensive spices in the world. That container that you see there is $20. Wow. And look at this. It comes in, in, in little, and in, in, I'll hold this down, little bitty vials inside one big bottle. Yes, and I use about four threads, and I put them right now inside the butter and the onion. Just four? Just four. Just four. Because it goes a long way. It goes a long way. Okay. Now, it gives color. Uh, flavor, it all depends. Some people say saffron gives a specific flavor. Mm -hmm. I am on the fence. Right. Kind of gives, kind of, kind of, it, it gives not. But I, one thing I know for sure is saffron is fat soluble. Okay. Some spices, they dissolve better in fat. Mm -hmm. Paprika dissolves better in fat okay. into a dish. Yeah. To the point that if you want to add paprika to a dish, either uh, instead of just adding it straight into, like, say, a soup, mm -hmm. take a saute pan, add some butter, cook your paprika a little bit, and then add it to your stew. Okay. The, the result is going to be completely different. So you get a, a much bigger flavor. A bolder flavor. And so saffron dissolves in... The saffron dissolves better in fat. Gotcha. You can still put in water, it will release flavors, it will release color, but it will do a better result in fat. Of course, there's people that might disagree with me, but this is our show. That's very true. And it smells amazing. Anybody yet? Yeah. Oh. Would you stop? <laughs> it's so cool. Are you kidding me? It's like the Today Show. You go to Manha in Manhattan and yeah. there you go outside. They're like, we just, hey. we just lack the, uh, the notoriety and people back there with signs. We'll get there. I'm from Tennessee. T Tennessee, uh, well, it, we're like not that many people from around the mm -hmm. world here, no. but it, it's okay. We'll survive. Okay, now, open the bag. One trick is you do not wash this rice. Do not wash the rice. Because we want the starch. See, the cool trick about making risotto is you have to mix it. Okay. You have to mix. Right now, this, the onions are a little bit tender. And you can just try an onion. It should be like soft, still mm -hmm. have a little crunch in Is there. Is this the same as sweating an onion, basically? Yes. Sweating we're sweating. We're Look at you. Hey, hey, I learned something. Wow, thank you. I hang out with this guy. So. so, rice into the pan. We do not wash it. Because right now, it will start the process of making the risotto, which is stir, 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 and stir, and stir. And continue to stir. And to continue to stir to the point that when I do this, I'm really focused and concentrated. Mm -hmm. That's why I brought you some reading material. Oh, okay. On one of my favorite magazines or stuff that is around. But wait, there's more. But wait, there's more. <laughs> okay, so we're going to coat the rice. Keep it at medium heat, and we're going to just keep stirring. Now, I want to stir this rice. There's two trains of thought. Okay. At this point, we will start adding the stock. Okay. If you don't have chicken stock, plain water is fine. If you happen to have one of my favorite chicken stocks, because I didn't make it. Mm -hmm. So if I make it, it's the best. <laughs> right, it tastes a lot. Of, yeah. uh, if, you don't, if you don't have to make it, I use organic Berendam bouillon, uh, bouillon, okay. aka stock paste. Yeah, and we used this last week with our um, one pot meals with the pasta. And we used it like a, a while ago and, and we I'll keep using it, it and it's fantastic. And uh, it's better than bouillon and it's organic mm -hmm. and it doesn't have any fillers, doesn't have any extra fat. Uh, it's, it's actually a really decent product. It makes 38 servings too. Yes, sir. That's, that's quite It goes a long way. It so does. this one is the size that you will find at the supermarket. Right. And if you go like to your poor Veyer food restaurant, if you go to the restaurant distributor, they give you the big bucket. If you go to Costco or Sam's Club, they'll have like 
the massive one. Okay. And I keep one at home with beef or chicken because I don't have time to make beef stock at home. Not a lot of people do. That's, <laughs> a, that's a long process. It is a long process. And I don't know about you, but I got swimming, soccer, kids, life. And Stuff to do. Class students uh, driving over here <laughs> and <laughs> jogging because somebody went for a... Somebody went for a, like... A trip to the mountains the whole summer uh -huh. <laughs> for two months <laughs> chasing down breweries. <laughs> so you can make your chicken stock by following the directions and mixing it with your hot water. Boom, chicken center is ready. Right. But I'm going to show you a shortcut. Okay. So what are the instructions there for making chicken stock? Instruction says it says only one teaspoon better than bouillon uh -huh. or one cube equals one ounce can. Uh -huh. Broth. One eight ounce can, sorry. No, okay. just one ounce. <laughs> so basically one teaspoon per eight ounces, That's right? right. Mm -hmm. So for this risotto, we're going to use at least 32 ounces of water. Okay. So I'm going to put two teaspoons directly into the risotto. Okay. So yes, I could have dissolved it in water. I could have dissolved it in there. But you know what? And make the stock. That's fine. Mm -hmm. I have a different technique. Straight into the rice. Okay. So... Oh, shall we have the uh, stock hot? Is it going to help? You know what? Yes, mm -hmm. you could. No, it couldn't. Uh, I have always, the correct way to do it, your stock should be hot. And then it's all about stirring. So what I do is, water room temperature, what I do is I increase the heat to medium high heat. Since okay. I'm going to be here in front of it, right. I'm going to stir, 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 stir. Now, the trick, is, the trick here is just add a little bit of stock at a time okay. and stir. What happens now with the action of stirring is all the rice kernels are rubbing against each other. When they're rubbing against each other, the friction will release more starch. Gotcha. The starch, rice starch, when the rice is ready, it's going to be nice and creamy with the addition of butter. Okay. But you know we're adding more butter, right? Of course. <laughs> it's just because. Oh, oh, oh. I mean, Especially. We only have a tub. <laughs> I actually have a backup of He's, uh, he's got a backup tub. tub of butter. <laughs> <laughs> just in case it's not enough butter, y'all. We've got to have more butter. Hey, listen. You don't get to be this chubby just by eating the, uh, uh, the fat-free stuff. <laughs> and I like, I like butter. I like my fat. Okay, so I'm going to come close to the camera because I want to show you the right texture to start like mitts in this so it doesn't have to be too liquid it doesn't have to be too thick i want to have a nice thick stack texture so i can stir 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 and the rice kernels will rub against each other don't be tempted to add all the water in there because then you'll be making soup right you won't be making a so it's a combination of not just the fat but also the starches from the rice that are causing that creamy texture. Correct. And if and if you think and if you really think about it, uh, how much fat did we add there? Um, two tablespoons. About two and, tablespoons and, and of butter. And a little squirt of, uh, of oil. So right. let's say we, we added two tablespoons of butter and, a, and about a tablespoon of uh, of oil. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. And uh, and before I add the final touch of butter, like half a tub. Right. <laughs> I'm going to show you the finished product without butter, and you're going to see how creamy it is and how nice the original product is. But wait, Chef Carlo, uh, that's traditional risotto? Yes. Oh, what about if I want to add uh, mushrooms to it? Then you have to call it risotto milanese mm -hmm. with mushrooms. And we were talking about that when we were talking about the rice. Is Risotto rice is arborio. Ar arborio. 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 Um, Look at you rolling the eyes. I'm trying. That's I'm so trying. cute. I'm trying my best. <laughs> He's so cute. That's so cute. <laughs> uh, but then I was asking, I say, so you can make risotto out of any rice? And he's like, yes, absolutely. Yes, you, you can. You can't call it. You have, to, you have to preface it with the type of rice that you create. So if you make it with brown rice, you have to call it brown rice risotto. Correct. Gotcha. And, and he can go, uh, oh, this is short grain brown rice risotto right. or long grain brown rice. You can make risotto even with... Remember when we make the um, the last last show we made the orecchiette, the pasta, yes, with the uh, peas, yes. 
It was doesn't, fantastic, by the way. It's but doesn't it look some, like something like this? Absolutely. We used the starch from the rice mm -hmm. to thicken the, 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 and it came almost like a risotto. Right. Can't call it risotto because they have to have rice. Right. But I've, I've made risotto with uh, any kind of grain. I've tried to make it with uh, wheat kernels. Mm -hmm. Wheat berries, yeah. I mean risotto, you just gotta stir, stir, stir. It takes a longer while because a whole wheat kernel has all the layers of bran, so it takes longer to cook. So you're adding in water a little bit at a time. Just a little bit at a time. Again, I wanna keep the nice thick texture that will allow me to stir. I don't wanna add too, too, too much that it looks like a soup. Right. And if you notice, I haven't stopped, I haven't stopped stirring. No. And I'm not gonna stop stirring. And you don't stop stirring a risotto. Correct. And this is where I love my first year students because they're like, ah, ah, Chef Carlo, ah, I'm tired. <laughs> my head hurts. It's like, we need to train a little bit more. <laughs> Keep Mist stirring the risotto. Keep stirring. <laughs> and here's the biggest mistake that people do when they stir something. Right. What are they doing? Use the whole body. You're in the whole body. No, you're using. It's not a cauldron. It's not. Like, it's not like oh 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 oh. We are conjuring. We're conjuring all the spirits from the bottom of the earth. No, it's actually. If if you really w want to train to it, I'm use only using my wrist. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you use the whole arm in your body, you'll get tired. Right. But no, you gotta get trained yourself to use your wrist. Oh, but I don't know how to do it. I tell my students, put your elbow against the belly. Right. And try to stir. Lock down your arm. Lock down your arm. Mm -hmm. You can't. If your elbow is against your belly, mm -hmm. you won't be able to move your whole arm. I tried to tell my wife the same thing when she was whisking eggs using a whisk. And she's like using the whole arm. And I'm like, you're... And they're like, ta 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 Are you planning on getting like, you know, <laughs> like Popeye there using that whole arm? It looks like having a, nice. a Caesar. You know, like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you use your wrist. So, you know, it's like, oh my God, it's so tired. Well, imagine if you have to do this now for 10 hours a day. Right. Because you might work for a certain Italian restaurant in Miami and you might be the risotto boy because you do a decent product and then you're doing this the whole day. <laughs> All day long making risotto. Yeah. And actually, I, I love it because it was the risotto boy. And then, of course, risotto can be topped with anything. Yes. But here's the thing. Let's say we're going to make mushroom risotto. Mm -hmm. Mushrooms are really delicate, right? Right. When do you think you will add the mushrooms? Not till the very end. Yes. Are you going to add raw mushrooms? Um, I guess you could if you really wanted to, but yeah. I, I wouldn't. No, you got to gotta cook them first. Yeah, I would saute them a little bit, maybe some bacon grease, and then, you know, throw them at the end. Are you after my job? Uh, no, I not at all. I just, oh, okay. I just, okay. I'm like... I had to throw in bacon grease, so... Oh, okay, because you're <laughs> like... That's my new favorite oil. Okay. <laughs> Your new favorite oil. Yes. Yeah. Bacon oil. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, where was I? Oh, risotto. So, uh, <laughs> toppings. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I got you off track with the you bacon. You got me off track with the bacon there. I went in like the bacon land. Oh, the heck with risotto. Everything is bacon. bacon and delicious <laughs> and mm, yum. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, let's say you want to do a lobster risotto. Okay. How would you do that? Um, actually, I would not cook the lobster. I would actually put it in there, and because it's such a delicate uh, uh, shellfish, I would allow the risotto to cook the lobster. That too. Okay. If you want to, uh, you have two ways to do that. You can add the raw shrimp almost at the end of right. the raw lobster right. and let cook it. Now, if you want to give a different texture, mm -hmm. I like to saute mine. Right. Because it's going to get crunchy on the outside and I add uh, the really last bit. Yeah. And, just to toss it and plus you can add the extra flavors without ruining the rest of the risotto. If you're cooking it outside of the risotto, sauteing it or whatever, you can add a little bit of different flavors in there and then add it in there so it's attached to the meat and yes. not part of the risotto. Now here's the thing, there's nothing telling you that your risotto can be the base and then you can just saute the shrimp and put it on top of the risotto. That's right. There's nothing wrong with it's that. It's almost like shrimp and grits. Actually, that's how I love to eat my odd still. Mm -hmm. I, when I make Ozzel Milanese style, I put, or Osobuco, mm -hmm. Osobuco, which is the shank cross cut and of the veal, right. but if you're out of a budget, you use beef. <laughs> and then you serve it with this risotto, and, uh, and you can just use it as a topper. So, so you're telling me that we can make risotto in, under 30, in 30 minutes, because we've got 11 minutes left. Oh, we have 11 minutes left? Yeah. Wow. Can okay. we do this? Can you, can you make risotto in under 30 minutes? I'm stirring, am I not? <laughs> I'm stirring, am I not? Nothing. Just, just stand look there and be, uh, be, look pretty, be handsome. So we talk about the, uh, the oh, you know what? Start mm -hmm. grating some Parmigiano Reggiano. Okay. You want big, par big grates or little grates? Uh, big one. It's easier on your, and actually not the other side. Oh, the we, medium we, one? We've got time. 
So now, here's the thing. When you order risotto in a restaurant, people, don't worry if it takes a while. Don't get impatient because risotto, the, the customer waits for the risotto. The risotto doesn't wait for the customer. When this bad boy is ready, al dente, it's ready. Mm. Don't let it just sit there. Yeah, hold on. That's the part with the crust. This is a tender part. Well, how do you, so can you tell the, which one's a tender part? Because that, that's what the crust oh, well, is. Oh, I wasn't on that side. So just start okay, like that. Go, See? Go. go sideways. <laughs> it's okay. Now, have you noticed if I put any salt on this? No, no salt. Ah, why is that? Um, because salt absorbs water. No, because uh, the, uh, the the bouillon is already salted. Ah, oh, that's right. Duh. And the flavors are concentrated. And have you ever tried Parmigiano Reggiano? Yes. It's salty too, right? It is. So yeah, good nut and salt to it. So after I stir my rice, and after I hope you guys can see it. See how creamy it is getting there. If you hold it, we got another camera. Put it right there. There we go. See, nice and creamy. They can see it in a little. Are so we picture in picture? We are picture in picture. No way. I had to do all the things by myself. That's cool, because they didn't see it on the monitor here. That's not true. Adam's here. He's helping out in the radio station, so. That's awesome. How much you want? About a cup? A little more? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll continue. To nah, that's fine. <laughs> I like cheese. That's fine. So and when do you add the, uh, the Parmesan? At the very end. Very end. At the very end. The Parmesan is not only the season, it's also a seasoning on it. It's a very nice seasoning. And uh, we just keep stirring, 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 stirring. I'm going to crank up the heat a little bit. Okay. Speed up the process since I'm going to be in front of it. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing you don't want to do is walk away. Right. What's going to happen? It's going to burn. Yes. <laughs> you have a ruined pan. Ruined yes. risotto. You have to start all over again. You, <laughs> listen, you never walk away from risotto. I've seen recipes out there. One pan risotto, no stirring. I'm like, yeah. Oh, <laughs> okay, fine. You know what? Yes, it comes in a box and it's got all the seasonings and stuff like that. And you just add just an extra bit of water instead of two to one. You're adding, you know, two and a quarter to one. And it's just, you know. Listen. Whatever rocks your boat. You can see right here, this is not brain surgery. No, it's, it's not It's not hard at all. And everybody, I think risotto is one of those things that a lot of people are intimidated by. Yes, they're really intimidated. And, and risotto is one of the things that then people, when they, when they do it, like Chef Frank teaches the continuing education classes. Mm -hmm. And when they do Italian risotto, uh, and after the night is over, when they do risotto, People rave about it, mm -hmm. and then they send pictures of what did it do with the risotto. Because you know what? Here's the base. Let's say you want to go southern, and you want to put sauté garlic kales in there, and the mustard greens, and a little bit of sausage. Sounds good to me. I'm good. Oh, look, people. No they're way. not paying attention. They're not paying attention. It's like, look, there's. I bet you if we put a sign free food, they'll just storm it. Yeah, come taste risotto. I'm sure that we might have to do that for next week. <laughs> Say, stick around. No. I'm like an idiot behind us. Stick around, get a taste. Okay, so risotto. Any grain can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I haven't done it with quinoa, mm. but I think it will be nice too. I'm sure you could do it with quinoa. Yeah, you know, and it's the same process. Start with an onion. Uh, give it a little, uh, coat, it, coat, it, uh, coat the grains with the fat, mm -hmm. and then add your stock slowly and just cook, 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 stir, stir, stir. Now, I've been asked before, can I use beef stock? Yes, you can. Sure. Now, for the original uh, risotto milanese from Milano, it has to be a clear stock, either chicken stock or just... Vegetable. Or plain water. Or plain water. Plain water. Sometimes... People, if you don't have quality stock next to you, mm -hmm. and I remember this, uh, he's still around, uh, French chef, very re renowned uh, Manhattan French chef, he's like, if you don't make your own stock, just use plain water. He doesn't even deal with like organic this, no, no, no. Yeah. Either make your own stock or use water. Yeah, one or the other. What, 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 one or the other one. Uh, he, uh, He's still uh, uh, Andre Saltner. Mm -hmm. He is the chef of Lutez in, uh, in Manhattan. I don't know if he's still the chef or not, but he uh, wrote a nice book about his restaurant and modern French cuisine here in America. And he is, was the first one that would say, <laughs> if you don't got stock, 
plain water. And did, 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 did we do a vignette on making stock? Or yes. Did we? No. No, we didn't. No, we didn't. No, we, you had already prepared the stock yes, when we made the velouté we sauce. But speaking of which, the velouté, if you want to check it out, look on YouTube. Look up NCC Culinary. There's a channel out there, and it's got all kinds of vignettes on how to do things. Um, the velouté sauce is over 1,000 views. So believe it really? or not. Yeah, your biggest hit, though. The velouté? Yeah, the velouté sauce is, is, is big. The biggest hit you have on that channel, though, get this, napkin folding. Are you kidding me? Well, you had like 15 different napkin folds. Are you kidding? Napkin folding. People, they've been looking up how to fold now. I'm guessing there's a lot of people out there looking to entertain. And they're looking napkin for professional folding. napkin folding. The very simple napkin folding I have there. It's not even fancy. I'm not doing like orchids or stuff like that. How are we doing time? We've got about five minutes. Five minutes? If that. We'll make it happen. <laughs> we will make it happen, baby. We will make it happen. You keep talking, be pretty. I'll keep I, talking. I, Actually, I, I'll talk about this real quick uh, with uh, from Our State Magazine. Things one that are of my coming up. Favorite magazines. <clears throat> things that are coming up this weekend. Actually, uh, the 25th in Wilmington, the uh, Donovan Donovan uh, Frankenwriter, which is a surfer, it's songwriter, a and a guitarist. He's been performing for two decades and exemplifies surf rock. Oh, I love some surf. Dick Dale. The electric guitar without distortion. Oh, so, well, like, lots of reverb. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that's at the Green. Greenfield Lake Amphitheater, uh, that's the 25th in Wilmington, and Wrightsville Beach is having Lumina Days, which is Dance to Live Jazz and Shag. Um, shag, North Carolina guys, Shag. Yeah. You know, it's, it's from the state, and I went, once, I, once I met, one time I saw people dancing Shag, I'm like, I can't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no uh, food, food and Drink Dance Contest on the Lawn, Wrightsville Beach Museum's annual event at the Blockade Runner Beach Resort. So and there you the go. Blockade Runner is a nice resort. Fantastic. So about a Two great things to do down there. Quarter of a cup. Okay. And there is a beer festival somewhere in there. I think in on Greensboro. Let's see. You keep you keep stirring. It's like is there is there a couple of pages before or after? Let's see. I'll see if I can find. Oh yeah, there we go. The Lazy Days Arts and Crafts Festival in Cary. Oh, that's awesome. That's this weekend. That is this weekend. It it's is. The There's people and from all over the state coming to that show. Perfect. And uh, it's actually, called the Lazy Days. What is it? Lazy Days Arts and Crafts Festival. And my wife bought something in Asheville from a lady who lives in. Um, down on the coast, and she says she comes to this every year. She looks, look her up. She makes purses and stuff. She's incredible work. Um, I'm not a purse guy, but I'm just you know pitching. Oh, you're there. not? No, I'm not. What about heels? No, I don't do heels either. <laughs> I'm tall enough as it is. I don't need to. And my calves are fantastic. Uh, oh, stop <laughs> it! But food truck uh, festival, uh, Greensboro, yes. and uh, that's October tw uh, August 26th, and uh, 50 food trucks in Greensboro, and then the Mount, uh, Carolina Sky Music Festival in Mount Airy, and that's that's uh, a fun that's one. it. Craft that beer, food, music, uh, wine. You got me a craft beer. Yeah, I had, you had you at it's like uh, you had you at bacon. Look, look at this belly. <laughs> this is a summer of craft beer exploring <laughs> in the Blue Ridge Mountains. But look it up. You can find all these things on uh, Our State Magazine. Yes, we're pitching for them because it's a great magazine uh, talking about everything great in uh, North Carolina. I gave it to my daughter yesterday. She's like, this is so cool. Not even gave it. I just slip it on the side mm -hmm. so she could see it. She's like, oh, my God, that is so cool in North Carolina. I'm like, yes. We got about three minutes. What you got? We got it. Boom. Risotto in 30 minutes. Mm. Let me show you the way it looks. I'm going to steal some before you show it. No, don't steal. Yep. Guys, this is before any additional butter. I want to make, like, just see. Look, look how creamy is this. Oh, my God. That is incredible. Look how creamy is that. It's like real risotto or something. Oh my God, if I could smack you in the air with a pen, I would. <laughs> oh my gosh, Chef Don, it's real risotto. And you really don't need any more seasoning at all. It's perfect. It's perfect. Ta 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 ta. There you go, guys. Risotto in under 30 minutes. You saw it here. Risotto Milanese, that's it. And now uh, we still have a couple of minutes. We got, uh, yeah, we got about 45 seconds. So in my family, uh, my mom taught me how to make it nice and, and thick. All the people will make it runny and creamy. Right. Hey! These all guys the always come every Tuesday. They show up for a little bit of food. No, they don't. They, they come to check the, the studio lights. Oh, is that what it is? Okay. So in my <laughs> family. So then uh, risotto becomes, here's a recipe. That's it. It, it is that simple. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you will decide if you want a little bit saltier or have a little bit more butter. But in my family, we like it 
very thick dry. Right. Uh, you can see other chefs that they make risotto is really creamy, almost like a spread on the plate. Right. And then it becomes a matter of taste. Mm -hmm. And it becomes a family like recipe, mm -hmm. like whoever wants to do it. But basically at this point, if you add a little bit more stock, it will become creamier. Mm -hmm. If you just keep stirring without adding liquid, it will become thicker. Right. So two keys to making risotto. Keys. No, two keys. Oh, two keys. Two tips. The best two tips to making risotto. Stir, 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 stir. There you go. That's five of them. Six of them. Never stop stirring. Never stop stirring. And what was the other one? And the other one? I don't know. I can't remember. Use. Ah, try to use the good go. rice and then, of course, experiment with other rice and other grains. There's mm -hmm. nothing wrong with that. Just remember, if it is, um, if it is, going to call it risotto and risotto only, this is the way it has to look. And that yellow is not from the stock, that's from the saffron. saffron. You don't have saffron, don't worry, you don't have to add saffron. You can still call it risotto without the saffron, but you can, you, if, to call it risotto milanese, it has to have saffron in it. All right, well, I think we're out of time for today. Already? I'm impressed, man. You made risotto in 30 minutes. Boom. Boom. Well, isn't this a show now that we need to do stuff in 30 minutes? Well, we did. We took it down to 30 minutes to keep everybody's attention span. We changed the set so that uh, maybe a student or two and, will come and, and knock on the window. And it is live, by the way. See? <laughs> <laughs> it is live. It is live. Okay. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, next week, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple uh, minestrone, Ooh. which is a soup, mm -hmm. uh, a one pot. We're going to keep on the one pot deal. Awesome. It's going to be very simple. I think it's going to be faster. No, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Okay, minutes. well, I'm going to walk over here and turn this off. And uh, It's going to walk over there and turn because he's doing the whole thing today. Thank you for watching. Put a like, put a click, send us a comment. Any suggestion, anything you want to see, send us a message. We're good answering. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>